Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. If you have followed the Corbett Report really at any point over the past nine years, you will know that this website's raison d'etre in many ways is to expose the mainstream media liars, the lies by omission, the lies by commission, the lies by taking decontextualized facts and putting them together in misleading ways, all the various ways that the MSM lies to your face each and every day. So I don't think anyone can accuse either myself or my regular audience of being surprised at the level of mendacity in the mainstream media. And yet, here I am, recording this actually on a Saturday night, absolutely blood boiling, shaking, literally shaking with anger at the lies that we see coming out of Syria right now in a what can only be described as a concerted propaganda effort to whip up war hysteria once again for another humanitarian love bombing. So... Let's see if I can paint this picture for you in a orderly fashion. Let's turn to this story from Moon of Alabama that was posted up late July 2016, where it noted that CIA rebels behead kid and other U.S. successes in Syria, where it notes, among other stories, that a group of uh, fighters under the rubric of Nur al-Din al-Zenki, moderate rebels, of course, because what other kind are there? Yesterday captured a Palestinian, a Palestinian boy of some 8, 10, maybe 12 years, taunted him, and accused him of fighting on the Syrian government side. The boy had no uniform on and had medical infusion tubes in his right arm, but they still insisted he was a fighter. The CIA supported moderate rebels, then behead the boy with a knife right on the back of that red pickup truck. And for those who are really interested, or for those who really need proof of it, there are not only photos and videos of the child alive, but also video of the beheading itself. This boy was decapitated with a knife right there on video. Absolutely unfathomably disgusting. So get a good look of these scumbags. These are the scumbags of al Nur al uh, Nur al Din al Zinki. They are child beheaders, who, of course, are backed by the U.S. government. As we see in this story from BBC News, which came out a couple days later, Syria conflict, boy beheaded by rebels, was a fighter. Where it notes that the sister of a boy filmed being beheaded by Syrian rebels has disputed a claim by a pro-government Palestinian militia that he was not a fighter. The Liwa al-Quds Jerusalem Brigade said Abdullah Isa was just a 12-year-old boy from a poor refugee family who lived in a rebel-held area of Aleppo. His sister later said on Facebook, well, that's journalism for you. His sister later said on Facebook that he was a Syrian from Homs who went to fight and defend his country. Members of the Nur al-Din al-Zinki movement are accu accused of killing him. The group said these, those responsible were handed over to a judicial committee and denounced the killing as a violation. The U.S., which has provided military support to the Nur al-Din al-Zinki movement in the past, said it was seeking more information on what it described as an appalling report. Here, you literally have the BBC calling these child, taking this story of this child beheading and basically justifying it. Oh, well, he was a fighter. This 12-year-old boy was a fighter. Clearly, someone who was going to do dangerous damage to these brave and valiant U.S.-supported terrorists, right? Well, of course, they were, were just following the State Department line on that, uh, as usual, being good stenographers for the powers that shouldn't be. If we can prove that this was indeed what happened and this group was involved, it would give us pause about any assistance or, frankly, any further involvement with this group, State Department spokesman Mark T Toner told reporters. And in case you think, oh, well, maybe this was just in the fog of war, it was only a couple of days after the incident, the State Department didn't really know the details, maybe they once they figured everything out, they ultimately denounced Nur al-Din al-Zinki and called them out as the child-defending, child-beheading scum that they are. No. This is from a press conference that was given a couple of weeks later in which they were again asked to clarify the position of the State Department. Here is State Department spokesman Mark Toner being asked, so what does a group have to do to actually be taken off the State Department list of groups or organizations that will receive State Department funding? How about beheading a child? Would that count? 
It's been said that, that the State Department is also investigating allegations. I mean, there's a video of this group beheading a 10-year-old Palestinian yes. boy. Yeah, uh, how are that. those investigations going? Has there been any result? Um, uh, yeah, so we did talk about that. We were looking into those uh, that incident. Uh, obviously, we condemned uh, if it were true. I know that the group itself said that they had also uh, made some arrests and then set up a commission of inquiry into the uh, into the um, incident. I don't have any updates at this point in time, but I can certainly check and get back to you. So what does a rebel group in Syria have to do to not receive U.S. funds any longer? What is what is the line that they must cross? What kind of controversial incident must take place for a group to stop receiving U.S. funds? Well, here, Mark, let, let me give you a help, help with this answer. The answer might go along the lines of something like, well, I, I can't say specifically, but maybe beheading a child might be where we draw the line. If you're a child beheading terrorist scum, we might stop supporting you. That's, that's the answer we're looking for here, Mark. First of all, um, there's uh, a lot of vetting of the Syrian moderate opposition uh, that has already taken place. And it's not just by the U.S., but it's by... Etc., etc., blah, 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 moderate opposition. I think you see where that answer is going. Anyway, uh, of course he doesn't say that beheading a child will actually invalidate this group from receiving any more State Department assistance. And don't take my word for it. Please do go read through the transcript of this briefing and uh, that an question and answer specifically. I'll put the link in the show notes, of course, so you can go and check it out. But yes, they are unwilling to distance themselves from this group of child beheaders. So that's just the way things roll in Syria. And... Here's a pretty good example of how the media has gone absolutely bending itself over backwards and into pretzel knots, trying to get you to de-link de de yourself from basic human morality. Oh, it's all right. They beheaded that child because he was a fighter. But wait, it gets worse. Here's a video from a few days ago from Channel 4 which had a report on Inside Aleppo and talking about some of the fight. Oh, wait, that's, that's strange. This video was private. It was just up maybe 24 hours ago when I checked it. it uh, why, why is it gone now? I can't imagine. Oh, is it because... Hmm, let's, let's check it out. Luckily, this was preserved here. England's Channel 4 News featuring moderate war criminals. On October 4th, 2016, England's Channel 4 News posted this video. Aleppo, up close with the rebels inside the besieged Syrian city. And it's a report about, oh, these moderate rebels and how brave and valiant they are and fighting. And they're, they're just a bunch of farmers and, and factory workers who have suddenly become, you know, they were forced into this position of fighting for the... Hey, wait, those... Some of those faces look really fam really familiar. What's going... Yeah, there's that guy, and... Oh, right, there's the pic... Oh. Oh. Yes. Literally. Channel 4 are interviewing and lionizing the child beheaders in their report. You cannot make this up. They are literally portraying the child beheaders themselves as the moderate rebels who are fighting for freedom in Syria, literally interviewing these people. And let me guess, let, I'll, I'll let you guess how many times they bring up child beheading in this video. Oh, that's right. Zero. Zero. They don't bring it up. They don't even mention, oh, by the way, these are the guys that were just busy chopping heads off of 12 year old boys a couple of months ago. This is why it's private. This is why this is now a private video. They took it off their channel because, and I wish I could have seen, uh, shown this to you, but I, I didn't screenshot it at the time. It was massively, almost 100% thumbs down, and every single comment was calling out Channel 4 for portraying these child beheaders as valiant freedom fighters. Every single comment person in the comment section was den denouncing Channel 4 for this. So no one was buying the propaganda this time around, but they still ran with it. They still went with it. They're now trying to distance themselves from it, apparently, but they had this report up on their YouTube channel. And this is just the way this propaganda rolls. Now, obviously, Aleppo has been a one of the central parts of this whole Syria propaganda humanitarian love bombing story for a while now. So if you need to get caught up on it, you might remember, for example, Aleppo Boy and this uh, this 
really uh, this picture that went around the world and was on the front page of every newspaper with this boy in the ambulance. Well, Truth Stream Media has a good breakdown of that story and again, how it relates to the photographer who took this picture, who was also the photographer that they showed in that picture uh, with the headband who was taking a selfie with the child beheaders. Uh, this guy who is literally the guy who took that that famous photo, literally taking selfies with the child beheaders. It, it This story is so insane, insane, that it almost defies, it beggars description how they can just throw it in your face like that. But that's the way these stories roll. Another great source of information on what's going on in Aleppo, Christoph German at New Great Game, has this great tweet. I, you sh really should follow him on Twitter. He has great information, but this tweet alone is worth it. He breaks down what's happening in Aleppo. 2011, rebels find no support in Aleppo. The opposition couldn't get the people of Aleppo to rise up against the regime, so they sent busloads of people to Aleppo. These people would burn something on the streets and leave. Journalists would take uh, pictures of this and broadcast it saying Aleppo has risen. So that was the phony uprising, quote-unquote, in Aleppo in 2011. 2012, the rebels invaded Aleppo. And in 2016, the rebels are actively stopping people from leaving Aleppo because they need human shields for this humanitarian love bombing propaganda campaign. And of course, it's all blame Assad because it's all Assad's fault somehow that the rebels are killing people and, and uh, stopping people from leaving and creating phony uh, uprisings in cities that weren't being uh, subject to uprising. So that's really Aleppo in a, nut in a nutshell. There was no, there was no support for the rebels. The rebels invaded the town. Now the rebels are stopping people from leaving, and they blame it on Assad. Um, if you need more information about what's happening in Syria, there was this great breakdown of the Syria uh, ceasefire breakdown that happened uh, just in the last few weeks. And what that means and how it came about, Syrian Girl doing a great v overview video here that's really must watch if you're new to all of this information. If you're seeing the propaganda that's spewing out about the white helmets, the valiant white helmets in Syria who are up for a Nobel Peace Prize and need to understand what's really behind that, this episode of Crosstalk breaks that down for you. You have uh, uh, Patrick Henningsen and Vanessa Beely and uh, Eva Bartlett on talking about the propaganda going on about the white helmets and how they are not what they are being portrayed to be. And the idea of giving them a peace prize is only appropriate if it puts them in the category of war criminals like Kissinger and Obama. But just to keep in mind what's really behind this and what the stakes really are, of course, we have Soros blasting Putin for Russian actions in Syria, which is pretty much the, the, the story of this propaganda campaign in a nutshell. It's people like Soros making sure to put Putin in the crosshairs for what's happening in Syria and avoiding any mention of anything that the U.S. is doing, like, oh, I don't know, supporting child beheaders. And uh, again, it gets even more blatant. Russia warns U.S. airstrikes on Syrian army would lead to war. Air defenses are active. Or in even a more blunt headline from Blacklisted News, Russia threatens to shoot down U.S. jets. And yes, that's exactly what is happening. In a stark warning to the U.S., a spokesman for the Russian Defense Ministry said Russia may shoot down U.S. planes attempting to launch airstrikes in Syria. I would recommend our colleagues in Washington to thoroughly consider the possible consequences of the realization of such plans, which is diplomatic speak for, you guys are going to start a war, and Russia has deployed advanced S-300 and S-400 anti-aircraft missiles to its bases in Syria, so it is not an idle threat. And, well, if you need to hear it from someone else, you can get it from Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Joseph Dunford, who told the Armed Services Committee recently this uncomfortable piece of information. The president. What about the option of controlling the airspace so that that barrel bombs cannot be dropped? Well, all all the options. Uh, that, what do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. Hmm. That's a yeah. I think that wasn't the answer they were looking for. There was it, Mister Wicker. Absolutely outrageous. We are being strung along by crude propaganda, literally promoting and lionizing child beheading terrorists as freedom fighters. If this sounds familiar, it's because this is the exact same script that has been playing out for decades now, and we can go back at least to the Taliban and the Af Af Afghan war and all of that nonsense that happened in the 80s. So, 
history repeats, and uh, the first time as uh, tragedy, the second time as farce. Well, I don't know what we can even call this, as this is the probably the 100th iteration of this piece of history, and it looks like it's only getting more nightmarish by the day. If there is any bright spot in this, it is that, as I say, this YouTube video, which now has been yanked, really was flooded with comments of people absolutely disgusted with Channel 4 for promoting those child beheaders, as they should be, and showing that no one, literally no one in the comment section was buying the propaganda. And uh, Off Guardian, which uh, focuses on The Guardian's propaganda, always doing a great job at showing some of the, well, the uh, the redacted reality that The Guardian tries to hide from its uh, readership, talking about a recent editorial that was part of this White Helmets Should Get the Nobel Peace Prize pitch, where only seven people actually supported The Guardian's fact-free editorial. And it says, The Guardian's comments are the now standard disaster zone, open for less than an hour, and with a full one-third, that's 18 of the 55 comments, censored. Of the 37 remaining, only 15 support the, edit- the Guardian's position, and those 15 comments are all made by the same seven people. This is less about propaganda and more about cultist reality denial. Again, I'll throw the link into this and every single one of these articles and videos in the show notes so that you can go and read through that for yourself. But suffice it to say, the humanitarian love bombing propaganda is ramping up. We have seen this script before and we know where it leads. And I want the liars in the mainstream media who are literally venerating the child beheading terrorists as part of this propaganda campaign to know that the blood of all of the innocent civilians who could and would be slaughtered in any such full-scale invasion and full-scale military conflict with Russia, all of that blood is on the hands of of the mainstream media liars who are propagating these lies. That is not something to take lightly. And I hope that these people who are propagating these lies know what that really means. Please get this information out to everyone that you know who is still trapped in the mainstream media vortex of lies. There are far too many people who know nothing Nothing whatsoever outside what the the boob tube, the tell-lie vision tells them each and every day, and we have to confront that. Once again, all of the links to all of these stories and videos will be in the show notes for this video. Please get this information out to others, and please start following people like Christoph German and Syrian Girl and the people over at 21st Century Wire, Activist Post, Blacklisted News, all of these resources because these are the people who are exposing the lies. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.